Hello everyone, I am super excited. While browsing the Microsoft Learn site, I realized that Microsoft has very silently released a brand new Microsoft Team certification, the Microsoft 365 certified Teams Support Engineer Associate. This is exam MS740, and in this video, we're going to take a look at what is this support engineer certification about, what are the skills measured, as well as give you some of my opinions about this certification. Because honestly, it's the first time that I see a certification so focused on troubleshooting. So it's brand new for me as well. So I'm really excited. Let's take a look at it together. Okay, so we're now on the Microsoft Learn site and I have navigated to the certification page. I will make sure that this link is in the description of the video. This way you can quickly go to it as well. Before we actually go and talk about the certification, I wanted to show you something. If I go back to Google, you will see that when I search for MS740, which is the exam name, it actually shows me the first result, exam 70740, which is actually one of the old Windows Server 2016 exams, which is now retired. So the exam MS740 is so new that it isn't even the first result on Google. Okay, so now let's head back to the certification and talk about that. I just wanted to show you how new the exam was. So the title you get after you pass the exam is Microsoft 365 Certified Teams Support Engineer Associate. So let's take a look at the description. Candidates for this exam are support engineers who support Microsoft Teams environments. Troubleshoot deployments, tune performance, collect and analyze telemetry and log data, and manage Teams environments. Okay, so that's quite a lot of things. Let's continue on. Candidates should have significant exposure in unified communications and hands-on experience with Microsoft Teams. And this is where it gets really interesting because most Microsoft exams have been about configuring tools. But because this is really about troubleshooting, we then have, in addition, candidates should have networking knowledge of Azure fundamentals, telephony, PowerShell, data storage technologies, APIs, app security, authentication and authorization, security and compliance information, debugging, performance tuning, and monitoring. Wow. I almost started laughing in the middle of that sentence because that's a lot of things you need to know. I mean, only by looking at this list over here right now, I am a bit intimidated to take a look at the rest of the exam. Okay, so now let's move forward despite the ton of requirements. So the learning path for this exam will be available on June 30th, 2021 and the exam will be available on July 8, 2021. So you can expect the beta to be out in July, and then the actual out of beta will usually be out mid-August, September, depending on how fast the required number of people take the exam. So certification details, only one exam needed called Troubleshooting Microsoft Teams, which I have open here, X exam number MS740. If we take a look at the details for the exam, exact same text here, we're not going to read it. However, where it becomes interesting is the skills measured. Before we go into actual details, let's take a look at the highlights. So, troubleshoot Microsoft Teams voice issues, 15 to 20%. Troubleshoot issues with Microsoft Teams meetings and live events, 20 to 25%. 
So this is actually the biggest part of the exam. We then have troubleshoot federation issues, 10 to 15%. Troubleshoot issues signing in Microsoft Teams, 15 to 20%. Troubleshoot teams and channels, 10 to 15%. And troubleshoot issues with files, 15 to 20%. So that's quite a few high level objectives. Usually Microsoft has three or four, but they're all pretty low percentage, except the meetings and live events, which is a quarter of the exam. Now let's go in the exam skills outline so we can check it in detail. I will zoom in, make sure everybody can see it. And now let's take a look at the details. So for Microsoft Teams voice issues, First one is troubleshoot audio and video flow issues. So it's really about audio and video quality, call drops, and things like that using the call quality dashboard. So seems to be a lot of voice, but we also have the emergency calling issues. This is something that I personally have never configured before. So when they said you need to know the team's unified communication, it seems to be really a requirement. Okay, so emergency calling, again, I haven't configured it personally. I cannot talk too much to it in detail. Now we have the direct routing issue after. So really troubleshooting issues, pairing the session border controller with the phone number service. Again, lots of unified communication stuff. After that, the big part of the exam troubleshooting issues with Microsoft Teams meetings and live events. So we have live event issues. So things such as the meeting creation and scheduling issues, this should be pretty easy. Recording issues, including policies related to recording. This is interesting. Sharing content and viewing reports, okay. Troubleshoot reporting issues, including issues with attendance reports and moderated questions. So you really need to know, I'm looking here, team services, so audio conferencing, licensing, okay. Teams clients as well, so team client startup issues, which is somehow inside Microsoft Teams meetings and live events. So really they seem to have mixed a lot of things here. Teams client startup issues and crashes on Windows, Mac and Linux, and then high memory or CPU usage. I'm not sure why that is under Teams meetings and live events, to be honest, but that's where Microsoft added it. So it's not only about unified communications. Now we started to go more into the Teams deployment and client troubleshooting as well. We then also have the message delivery issues, attaching files and content to messages, and chat notification issues. Okay. After that, really small high level objective, troubleshooting federation issues. So troubleshoot issues interoperating with Skype for Business. I really think they will talk a lot more about Skype for Business server as Skype for Business Online is really going away in about 45 days from me recording this video. So you still need to have a bit of Skype for Business knowledge as well as Teams Federation knowledge. So you need to know how to configure the Federation policies and domain list and verify the tenant configuration settings, including allowed and blocked domain list and type of Federation. Great. Now next up, troubleshooting issues signing into Microsoft Teams, 15 to 20%. Now we're getting into a lot of identity stuff. So we have verify ADFS health, including endpoint availability and synchronization status. Troubleshoot issues with Azure Active Directory seamless sign-on. So SSO, identify reasons for blocked accounts by reviewing web block data. I guess this has to do a bit with Azure ID identity protection. It doesn't seem to be clear what kind of exact tool they mean by this. We then need to know how to verify the user's virtual private network configuration settings, including split tunneling and client version, as well as all the other possible network issues, so firewall ports, IP ranges, and proxy configuration issues. 
we then have the member sign-in issues. So investigate authentication issues, verify whether an applied conditional access policy prevents sign-in. So this really expands the scope of this exam because now you also need to know how to configure Azure AD conditional access. So you'd actually, in a way, need more than the team's support engineer role-based access control role to verify and configure all of those things. Then we have determine whether a user account or the device from which a user attempts to sign in is the cause of the sign-in issue. Again, this might be in relation to identity protection, the risk level, or even conditional access. But now we go back to Teams a bit. So collecting and analyzing Teams debug logs, Teams room system sign-in issues, and then investigate point of failure in the sign-in process flow. After that, we have guest troubleshooting as well. So adding guest users to Teams, I guess this will look at, hey, is the guest access enabled? Is there any domain blocks anywhere? Why can't the user sign in? Audit invitation sent, but not used in inactive accounts. I guess you'll also have to know a bit of Azure AD access reviews for the inactive accounts, as well as review and sign in logs and audit logs for the domain which hosts Teams. Okay, now we're going into, we got two more troubleshoot teams and channels. So troubleshoot issues with apps. So configure teams to allow or block an app, probably using the app setup policies and all of that. Validate app permission policies and app setup policies. This is fairly straightforward. And this is also covered in the MS 700. Okay, now we have troubleshoot issues with public and private channels. So differentiate between capabilities of public and private channels identify limitations for private channels, check user permissions, team policies and tenant policies, troubleshoot channel email settings, okay, troubleshoot tenant replication issues in teams and channels, as well as deletion issues in teams and channels. This is really interesting as the deletion issues, I mean, a user deleted something, it's probably also talking about the restore, how come it's not there or who deleted it and being able to figure all that out. Then we have troubleshoot issues with files. So troubleshoot person to person private chat file issues, including access and sharing. So remember person to person chat uses OneDrive for business. So you need to know how to check that as well. So that requires the SharePoint and OneDrive for business knowledge. And then we also have file issues for private channels here. So verify that the SharePoint site for the channel is accessible, SharePoint access permissions, and the SharePoint site collection link is intact. And the same thing for public channels, as well as troubleshoot file synchronization issues and missing files. Wow, that is a lot of content for the certification. This is actually the first time I actually go through it, so you've managed to catch some of my live reactions as we covered this. Again, this is a very first look video at this exam. I'm really looking forward to July 8th when the beta exam should be out. But meanwhile, take a look at the links at the bottom of this video in the description. And please let me know, are you excited for the exam? What do you think about a certification exam based on troubleshooting. Will you go take the exam? Please let me know in the comments. I'm really looking forward to reading your talks. And if you enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date with Microsoft certification news, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for listening to this video.